Hello, and welcome to the House by the Sea. I'm the current resident, Jessica Dwyer, and my job here is to share insights and stories about dark shadows, as well as keeping Nicholas Blair's mustache perfectly waxed and majestic. Have a seat, enjoy some tea, and uh, never mind that chanting sound coming from the basement. I swear it's just the pipes. Dark Shadows has probably one of the most screwed up families in the history of television. But it's not just the Collinses that represent bizarre family behavior or a tough way to go when it comes to your relations. Dan Curtis was fearless when it came to storylines for Dark Shadows, borrowing liberal and literary inspiration from classic novels like Dracula, Wuthering Heights, and The Turn of the Screw. Henry James and the Bronte sisters weren't known for their warm versions of relatives. Within Dark Shadows, alongside the Collins family, we are shown the Jennings clan, the Evans family, and the Stewarts. Needless to say, there are some interesting themes tackled within these families. Curtis mixed a potent brew of neurosis, issues, backstabbing, and hatred, but also at the core of many of the characters was a deep and abiding love, even within all the bad things, the scary things, and the infighting. Let's look at some of the families and their dynamics within the series to see what I mean. First, of course, is the Collins family. Let's zero in on our favorite drinking daddy, Roger. Roger is a complicated man, and his relationship with his son David is even more complicated, to say the least. David at one point tries to kill Roger. Roger spends most of his time emptying decanters of brandy, port, and scotch down his throat while remaining very aloof. For most of the first part of the series, we think that Roger is a soulless douchebag, but we learn that he truly loves his son, especially when David's supernatural entity of a mom comes back into the picture to try and burn her son alive with her in order for the two of them to live forever. Roger and David aren't what we would say are bosom companions, but they do care for one another, even through all the other insanity they will eventually encounter. And yes, David will try to kill him again. But it's interesting to see a single dad raising a son, even with the help of his very rich family, at that time on television. It was a rare dynamic for audiences of the time. It would predate the courtship of Eddie's father by a few years. A lot of people seem to forget that aspect of Roger Collins, and I always thought the Dapper Daddy and Lord of the Turtlenecks deserve some credit considering, you know, all of the attempted murders. Now let's move on to Carolyn and her mother Elizabeth. Here we have a single mother raising a teenager in the late 60s. Not only is Elizabeth at the beginning more than a little agoraphobic, she's got some heavy secrets. She's a woman with a daughter growing up in one of the most wild times of the last hundred years. Elizabeth sees Carolyn making some of the same mistakes she had done previously, hooking up with dangerous characters, living dangerously. These sorts of choices have had bad outcomes as Elizabeth found out the hard way. She loves Carolyn and her family and is fiercely protective of them. When her long-lost cousin Barnabas shows up, she welcomes him with open arms. Elizabeth's story is straight out of a gothic novel, with the supposed corpse of her husband buried in the house. Then there's the mysterious governess, Victoria Winters, with whom Elizabeth seems especially close. Again, with all, within all the insanity is a woman who loves her family, even at the detriment of her own sanity, and theirs, with her need to protect them. Many of us know all about an overprotective mother, but Elizabeth is one in a town where young women wind up drained of blood or sliced open by werewolves. Elizabeth is an interesting juxtaposition of ideas. At one point, she's the powerful matriarch, but she's also obviously attracted to a bad type of man, as is evident by her relationship with Paul Stardard. There is also the much later verified fact that Victoria Winters is her daughter from an affair with another man one we still aren't sure who it is. It's an inspired bit of casting that V.C. Andrews' first film version of Flowers in the Attic cast Louise Fletcher and really made her look like Joan Bennett, to the fact for years when I was younger, I thought it was her in the role. I would say V.C. Andrews was more than a little inspired by Dark Shadows in her writing, actually, but I can neither confirm nor deny that fact. Speaking of incest, I'll get to that in a bit. 
but I digress. Elizabeth's desire to keep the family together and out of scandal, her pride in being a Collins, was one thing of the things that Barnabas truly loved about her. She of course reminded him of his own mother, and within that bond you can see many instances of a warmth of affection. Even with Roger, who doesn't really show that much in the way of emotion, we see that the siblings truly care for one another. Carolyn and Barnabas, well, that's something different. Carolyn is Barnabas's quote-unquote distant cousin, but that doesn't stop him from sinking his fangs into her when she, he needs to reverse turning into an old, old man. And not only the classic version, but even more so in the 1990s version of Dark Shadows, Carolyn and Barnabas have a major bond after he's fed on her. In House of Dark Shadows, this was also very pronounced and it would eventually cause Carolyn to become a full-on vampire. You'd have to be blind not to see the incestuous subtext of this. While they aren't brother and sister, the Carolyn and Barnabas dynamic is more than a little eek inducing. What starts off as this mysterious worldly older man who is a distant relation becomes something else. It's more than obsessive, especially in House of Dark Shadows. It was pre pretty daring of Curtis to go that route with the relationship, and I find it darkly amusing that people forget Carolyn is related to him, especially when it comes to that scene with Ben Cross and Bla Barbara Blackburn. Within this same world, we have Sabrina Stewart and her brother Ned. The first time I saw these two, Sabrina gray-haired and unable to really move, and Ned, who was more than, att more than attentive to her. I just got the really odd vibe from them. Specifically Ned, who seemed to be a little more than intense in his devotion to his sister. I was actually not much older than 13 or 14 when I saw the episodes that showcased their storyline, and even when, then I found it weird how much he was all about his sister. Imagine my surprise years later when it was revealed that he wound up marrying Carolyn. Maybe I'm just crazy, but Pella's death Sabrina harkens me back to that whole flowers in the attic thing again. Let's come to the Evans family for a moment. Again, we have a single father raising a daughter, which again was very rare for television and still sort of is. Sam raised Maggie after his, his wife died when his daughter was very young. Even though Sam was very much an alcoholic, he and Maggie were very close. The debacle that would befall them when Barnabas came into the picture showed even more that loving relationship between the two of them. Before I tackle the Jennings clan, I'd like to speak a bit about Quentin Collins, the other major heartthrob of Dark Shadows, and a complicated character on many levels and storylines. Quentin's wild side caused him to be the black sheep of the family, or wolf? Due to his libido and wild ways, he would cause more strife in the Collins family than most. While many people see Quentin as an amalgam of Peter Quint and Dorian Gray, he's also more than a little bit of Rochester from Jane Eyre with his crazy wife hidden away and the tragedy of his love affairs. But Quentin was also loyal to the family, most emphatically to Jameson Collins, who David Selby named his own son after. Loyalty, kids! Quentin would come back to defend the town of Collinsport and his family against the ancient Leviathans. Okay, yes, Quentin did try to kill everyone at one time as an avenging ghost of demonic proportions, but there were some issues from there, you know, earlier, okay? Quentin would keep returning in his now immortal form back to Collinwood and the city that bore his family's name. The Jennings clan were inextricably tied to the Collinses thanks to Quentin and his curse, being blood relations, pun, ha, to Quentin Collins, who was their great-grandfather. Tom and his brother Chris, along with their sister Amy, didn't really avoid the curses of the Collins family even if they didn't carry the name. But once again, here we have a man raising a child on his own. Tom was very close to his sister Amy and raised her as their parents had died. When Tom went full bloodsucker, and died himself, it drove Amy to an asylum and dragged his brother Chris back home to take care of his younger sister. The bond of the Jennings clan was a strong one, and Amy loved both of her brothers deeply. But remember that little bit of incest I was talking about? No, I'm not talking about Amy and her brothers. Maybe Curtis knew or the continuity factor slipped unnoticed, but once again when it came to David and Amy, kissing cousins seemed to be okay. Like it or not, Amy was a Collins thanks to her great-grandfather, and that means she and David were related. And so, 
When the later stories of the characters came to be, and David and Amy hooked up, they are in fact third cousins. So there's that. Throughout the series, though, the darkest and largest shadow looming is that of Barnabas Collins. Barnabas's entire character is based on his love and desire for family and to reconnect. He spends his first many episodes of the series recreating the home he grew up in and restoring it. His lonely spirit longs for that connection with his family. Family love and loyalty was instilled in him from his parents and his love for his brother and sister. The loss of his family destroyed him, be it Sarah's death and then that of his uncle, who was more like an older brother to him, Jeremiah. Barnabas was willing to allow himself to die in that duel that Angelique's betrayal leads to, rather than harm him. Even for all of its detractors, the Tim Burton film shows Barnabas and also Elizabeth's devotion to the family. The Collins clan goes through literal hell, but within the stories we see that blood is thicker than tougher than the blackest of magic. At the end of the day, or night as the case may be, Dark Shadows is about a family that risks everything for those they love, no matter the sacrifice. They accept one another and protect one another. Dan Curtis and company made a series that broke taboos and brought to the screen classic stories with a new spin, but at the center was a family tree that, while creepy and scary in appearance, and struck by lightning more than once, was strong and weathered the storms that raged around it, refusing to break. And isn't that what we all wish our families could do?